it is easier to play harmonics on your bass strings than on your uh, really, really high strings. You can still do the basic uh, 12th fret harmonic on the highest string, for example, but if you try to go to the really high ones, they are gonna become very, very weak. So let's uh, demonstrate. Hello everybody and welcome to another Tone Bass live stream. Today we are tackling a big and complicated topic that some might underestimate, but that was requested by a lot uh, by our viewers. First thing to understand is that there are two types of harmonics in the world. There are so-called natural harmonics and so-called artificial harmonics. They are basically the same, they are performed in different ways, they sound very, very similar, and they kind of achieve the same purpose. So, um, a lot of times in our music that we find uh, ourselves reading, it will be indicated whether uh, harmonics are supposed to be artificial or natural, but a lot of times it is not indicated. And this is going to be a trend with harmonics. The reason why I was so reluctant to go through this topic at all is that, um, there are literally hundreds of competing conventions when it comes to writing harmonics down, and that can make reading them an extremely frustrating experience. It's hard to tell what notes we're supposed to play, where we're supposed to play them, what notes are supposed to come out, what notation is being used, what the rhythm is. Oh my god, harmonics are just a headache. Uh, and I, I speak from personal experience. This is something that I've had to battle uh, myself quite a bit. First of all, what are harmonics? Well, <laughs> Uh, that's a complicated question for another day. We're not going to go into the physics of it. Acoustics is a fascinating part, a part of physics, but we don't have time for that. Acoustics is a domain that you could jump into just like you could jump into a uh, guitar. So there's a lot to talk about there and uh, we don't have time to go uh, through that. But basically, if let's, let's take it super simply. If you stop the string at certain specific points and you play without pressing down on the fingerboard, you will create sounds that are different from the basic pitch of the string. What does that mean? Well, if I play this string here, the lowest string of the guitar, the E, we might feel like a single note is being heard, but in reality, we are hearing a series of overtones, a series of other uh, notes that are being heard at the same time and together combine to form what we experience as a single pitch. Here. Again, I'm not gonna go into acoustics, but if I then take any object or any part of my hand, and I cover the strings in specific places, usually those that correspond to simple fractions, like one half, one third, one quarter, and so on, I will create a different sound than the open string sound from before. So this is my open string, and this, for example, is my first harmonic, uh, which happens to exist here in the middle of the string. If I press my finger down, I'll create a different sound. This is a different sound than that. That's the basics of natural harmonics. I use my left hand to stop the string in a specific place and create a different sound. Now, there are very many places on which this can happen. It can work on every string. And we have a lot of spots where this functions. So, they get higher and higher as you get closer to the end of the string, whether in this end or on that end. And yes, you can also play them on the other side of the string. So on. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit about the technique of actually performing these uh, harmonics. Again, this is really simple. I know it's really basic. Stick with me. We'll go to the technique aspect of things in maybe 10 minutes or so. Uh, so after that, we'll go to the much more interesting and intricate and complicated side of things, which is how to read them and understand them. Um, so for performance of uh, natural harmonics, what you do is your left hand, instead of, press, instead of pressing down on the fretboard like this, it only requires to touch the string, barely making any pressure on it at all, literally just touching the string, no pressure, no pressing down, just touching on the string. And um, you want to be on the line between the frets. So as we know, the fret is the distance between these two lines. This is one fret, another fret, another fret, another fret, another fret, and so on. And for harmonics, we do not play inside a fret like we normally do regular notes like this. Instead, we go over the line that separates the two frets and we only touch the string rather than pressing it down and we play and that will create a harmonic. There are a couple of particularities of technique that you must pay attention to when you do this and we'll go over these right now. 
but the most important one is to not be afraid to play quite loudly. Harmonics sound very quietly, so your right hand that is doing the actual playing must be prepared to put in a lot of effort for very little return, so to say. Uh, if I were to play this note with the same strength as I play the harmonic, then it would sound like this. That is almost the loudest sound I can create on the guitar. Unlike in regular notes where I am pressing down the note and as soon as I take the finger off, the note ceases to sound. No more note. Actually, ironically, I created a harmonic, but as soon as I take my finger off, let's take this note here. That one is not gonna create a harmonic. As long as I, as soon as I take my finger off of the string, the note is off. When it comes to harmonics, that is not the case. Uh, I can play a harmonic and I can take my hand all the way away from the string and it will continue to sound. This is true for all harmonics, no matter where on the fretboard you're playing them. Right? So uh, it is actually good practice to play the note and then go away right after you've played it. And this is the trickiest part for a lot of beginners that have not done a lot of harmonics in the past. When do I take the finger off? It's something that you will learn to feel after a while by just experimenting and trying to make it sound good. If you hold it for too long, you'll sort of suffocate the harmonic. So this is what that sounds like. It works, but it's a, it's a quieter sound. Let's compare one where I'm suffocating, that's gonna be the first try, versus one where I'm not. Here's the suffocation nation. All right, let's compare that with the non-suffocated version. Just goes on for a lot longer. My AC just also started going at the same time. Hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. All right, so uh, we've learned how to play harmonics and we know that we can play them in certain frets, but not in others. If I try to play it here, for example, that's gonna be very hard. It is sort of a really, really high harmonic really hard to make it sound like anything. So certain frets produce harmonics very easily while other frets do not produce harmonics. And generally, it is easier to play harmonics on your bass strings than on your uh, really, really high strings. You can still do the basic uh, 12 fret harmonic on the highest string, for example, but if you try to go to the really high ones, they are gonna become very, very weak. So let's uh, demonstrate. You know, it just becomes a noise. It just becomes this. More than anything, it becomes the sound of the nail uh, going through the string and not really sounding, right? So um, harmonics are easier to do on the basses, especially if you do the really high ones, you know, like that. All right, so uh, that's how you play natural harmonics and uh, your music will sometimes tell you where to find them in what fret and in other cases, it will not tell you that. We're gonna go in, over that in a second as soon as we uh, look at sort of how to find harmonics where they are and what uh, we should do with them. Let's briefly go over artificial harmonics before we do that though because it is really important to differentiate between the two and to be able to do both techniques. So artificial harmonics are kind of the same principle as the natural harmonics but they require you to actually press something down with your left hand. Uh, I'm gonna give an example. If I press with my first finger in the first fret of the second string, the note that I'll produce is a C. Now if I go in the correct spot with my right hand and I use my index finger to touch, not press down, just touch the string exactly one octave higher than where I was at the beginning. So here's my regular C that I would play for a regular note one octave higher than this C is uh, the next C, obviously. The next C is here in the 13th fret. So this is a C, this is another C. That's an octave. So I press down with my left hand, the first finger in the C here, and then I touch, not press, with my index finger of the right hand, exactly one octave above. And after that, I can use whichever one of my remaining fingers, not the index finger, but any other one, to pluck the string. That will create an artificial harmonic. And I actually have my secondary camera here for you to see. It's a little dark, but you should be able to see it. I am holding down this finger, but not pressing it into the string at all. I am only touching the string here, and I am using my middle finger in this case to play the same string that I'm touching. 
I can use my middle finger, I can use my uh, ring finger, I can even use my thumb. Although I don't recommend doing this on the treble strings. So just like you would be playing scales here, you could go up and down the fretboard, you can move your first finger, your index finger of the right hand around. And if you keep it exactly one octave above the note that you're currently playing, you can play artificial harmonics on every note on the fretboard. So in this case, I'm gonna go up and back down. Up, down. And you can play entire scales like this. And the good thing with uh, artificial harmonics is they can also vibrate them. It's impossible to vibrate natural harmonics unless you do this trick here, which is, I don't recommend it. It's not very, it's not very useful unless you are on the third or fourth strings. So this is a trick. This, this is not what this live stream is about. But um, artificial harmonics can be vibrated, which is very, very good. Right? Uh, so this is how you play artificial harmonics versus uh, natural harmonics. The artificial harmonics that we most commonly see are exactly one octave above the pitch that you're currently pressing down with your left hand. Your left hand can do whatever it normally does. For example, it can hold down a whole chord. One of the notes can be harmonic. In fact, all of them can be harmonics. Right? Sorry. Just, uh, I just left the guitar in detuning overnight and it went very far out of tune. So, um, all right, so harmonics, artificial harmonics are usually exactly one octave above, above the pitch that you are playing. However, they can also be at other places. They are basically subject to the same rules as natural harmonics. They work well exactly one octave above. They work well exactly one fifth above. They work well exactly one fourth above and so on. Uh, so in, from this note here, I could technically also do this. Right? I can go as far as I want. These are much less common. Usually when we do artificial harmonics, we do them at octaves. Because all harmonics have a pitch. Sometimes that pitch is really, really, really high, so it's kind of hard to distinguish. I'm not sure if you can even hear this on this microphone. I hope you can. Just a really, really high beep, right? Uh, but they all have a pitch and understanding which pitch they produce is really difficult. Um, I'm gonna go through the bare minimum of theory required to understand this so that uh, the next section makes sense. And for that, we're going to be looking at an example here. Uh, so unfortunately, this would be uh, high up on the screen. I have not found a way to make this uh, use uh, space better. Um, but um, this is the harmonic series. Again, I'm not gonna go into the physics of this, but um, our regular non-harmonic notes that we make on the guitar basically always correspond to the first pitch here, the original or basic pitch. There are other names for it as well. And as I was saying before, when we play a note, we're actually hearing all of these harmonics at the same time, right? All of them are sounding at the same time. Some of them are louder, some of them are quieter. That is basically what creates the timbre of an instrument. Timbre is basically what it sounds like, what, it, what, it, what uh, makes a guitar sound like a guitar, right? Well, one of the things, there's also attack and a lot of other things, but one of the main aspects of what makes instruments sound like they do is the harmonic series, the overtone series, and which overtones are stronger than the others. Harmonics uh, can produce these pitches here um, easiest. So this is a series of, uh, of pitches that is valid for every note, no matter what note you play on what instrument, you will always hear these notes at the same time as the basic pitch. Some will be louder, some will be less loud. Um, and uh, these are the basic notes that you will produce on a guitar as well. So when I play the guitar, when I, when I press the uh, finger on the middle of the fretboard, exactly half of the, of the length of a string, that is on the 12th fret, and this might feel a little strange at first, 
I know that when I was a kid, especially, and somebody taught me that this was half of the string, it really didn't feel like it because the fretboard is so uneven. It makes it feel like maybe somewhere here would be the half of the string. That's, that's not correct. If you literally just take a measuring tape and you measure them, you'll see that this distance is exactly as long as this distance. So if you play the, uh, if, you, if you press down a finger exactly halfway through the guitar, you're going to create the first harmonic, which is in the 12th fret. So this is in the 12th fret. That was supposed to be an X. All right. Oh, sorry. I should uh, show this. So uh, what I was doing is I was writing these no uh, Roman numerals here. If you play the uh, guitar on the 12th fret, you will create this harmonic here. And that is your first overtone. Now for the next, you have to divide the string into, th into three equal parts. And the place where you do that is the seventh fret. So this length is identical to this length, which is identical to that length. You have divided the string into uh, three equal parts. So that is the seventh fret, and you will create that note, basically an octave and a fifth above the original note. Um, the next one is a perfect fourth. That is when you divide the string into four equal parts. So this part is equal to this part, which is equal to this part, which is equal to that part, sort of, more or less. Uh, and when you do that, you reach the fifth fret and you'll play this note here. That's the pitch that will result out of it and so on. So when you divide the string by two, you get the first overtone. When you divide it by three, you get the second overtone. When you divide it by four, you get the uh, third overtone and so on. You divide it by, by five, by six, by seven, by eight, and so on. And your intervals, that uh, your intervals, I mean, that you will produce, the pitches at which the harmonics will sound, always follow this harmonic series here, right? So these numbers here are not the frets on which you produce them. This is the uh, number of the overtone that you are uh, producing. These are the numbers of the overtone that you're producing. This is, it's a lot of math and we're not gonna dive too deeply into this, but this is how you find out what pitch will be produced by playing a harmonic in a given fret. And sometimes, this pitch is really, really easy to figure out because at the 12th fret, for example, whether you play a harmonic or a regular note, they actually sound at exactly the same pitch. But in other places, the pitch is really, really different. For example, here in the fourth fret, it's still, it's still the same note, just a couple of octaves higher. It's the same note, but really, really high. And then you go somewhere like here in the fifth fret, and the note that you produce as a harmonic is totally different from the note that you would produce by just holding down the fret. So this is an A if I just play it as a regular pitch, and it's an E if I play it as a, uh, as a harmonic. So totally different sound, different octave, different pitch. Right? So harmonics are confusing from the beginning. Even if you just play natural harmonics, even if there was not the confusion of notation, which unfortunately there very much is, um, harmonics are still a very, very difficult thing to play, unfortunately. It's difficult, not technically necessarily, but to figure out what pitch is going to come out. Now I've given you a mathematical way to calculate exactly what pitch is going to come out. If you want this graphic, by the way, it's from Wikipedia, it's in the public domain, um, so I can show this to you. Uh, but basically these are the pitches let us move on and look at how harmonics are notated because this is the difficult part. Um, so I've uh, gathered a number of examples here and we will be looking at them one by one. Uh, first of all, I'm going to find my blank, uh, my blank staff paper, which I thought I had it here. Um, staff, there we go. Okay, so I got this right here, sorry. Just gotta delete some layers here. Still a lot of layers from uh, Ashley's composition course, uh, which is great, but I do need to delete these. All right, now we have a new layer, I'm ready to go. So uh, here's a staff, wonderful little thing. Let's look at a couple of systems used to notate harmonics in the world. And this is where uh, you guys will hate your lives <laughs> if you've been trying to figure this out on your own. I've actually made a plan to go through them systematically. So uh, I have my notes here. Now, it, it, it's important to note that the most typical way of notating harmonics in general is using a diamond note head. So I'm gonna make my uh, line really thin here so that I can 
draw this. So a diamond note head looks like that. And it is different from a regular note head, which looks, looks like this. I know that the difference might seem little, but trust me, it's really obvious when one of your notes looks like this and not like that. It's really obvious and easy to notice. Um, but the problem is that harmonics are sometimes notated with the outline of a diamond shaped note head like this. And other times they are notated with a filled in diamond head like this, right? So we have these two competing notations and they both mean the same thing. Some composers use one of these to represent natural harmonics and another to represent artificial harmonics. That is not standard practice. If a teacher told you that that's the case, that's wrong. <laughs> that is true for certain pieces and for certain composers, but you should absolutely not take it as a rule because there's plenty of situations where these two are either used interchangeably or more commonly where one composer uses only one of them to represent both natural and harmonic, uh, and both natural and artificial harmonics. So uh, this leads to a really big problem. The problem with the not filled in note had the first option that I showed you here, the problem with that, I didn't mean to delete it, I just meant to make a mark on it. The problem with that is that it doesn't tell you as much about rhythm as other notes, other notation systems do. So if I have something like this in a regular piece, I will know what each of these note values are because the stem is different, but also because the note head is different between these two notes, right? If I, however, am using the outline notation for harmonics where the note heads are not filled in based on rhythm, then what I will see is basically the following. That's the first note, it has an eighth note stem. That's my quarter note. This is my uh, half note. And this is my quarter note. What do you notice here? There is no more difference. By the way, that was just a little mistake. Hand marking. There is no more difference here between this note and that note. Right? And that is a really big problem. With this notation system, there is no way to accurately convey rhythm. Specifically, the difference between half notes and quarter notes. So I really don't like <laughs> this system in particular, the one that is highlighted in, in yellow here. I really like it when they use the filled in note head system. If we were to write the same passage now with the filled in note head system, it would look something like this. All right, that's the first note. This one is filled in because it's a quarter note. This one is not filled in and this one is filled in. And that is obvious. Now we know what the rhythm is. There is no debate. There is no question that this is a half note and this is a quarter note. But on the system above, we did not know that. Okay? All right. So that's the most basic, the, your first confrontation with the fact that harmonics notation is not standardized and composers use it differently, sometimes from each other and sometimes even differently from themselves, which is really killing me. You will notice the same composers using different competing systems within their own pieces for absolutely no reason. So it is horrible. <laughs> it is really, really difficult. All right, if that was not enough, this is only the beginning, this is the first layer of things. So first of all, we might have some trouble finding the rhythm if one of these notations is used. But some composers don't use the diamond head notation at all. Instead, they use the regular notation that we were just looking at before, like this. So we have just regular notes, let's say that, all right, and they write something like harm on top. Or they write har or just h or harms or harmonics, they spell it out. And sometimes they will even have specific indications of which notes are supposed to have the harmonic and which ones are not supposed to have the harmonic. Sometimes there are x's, sometimes there are other symbols which are going to be looking at in a second. 
But sometimes you have passages written in normal note heads, not diamond shaped note heads, where your notes are still supposed to be played as harmonics. And that is just really confusing because a lot of times they will write harm and then they'll write nat when you're supposed to go back into normal uh, sounds. Let me write that nicer. When you're supposed to go back into normal sound. Uh, but a lot of times they'll forget or it will not be obvious when it is time to switch back from harmonics into regular notes. And other times you will have entire chords like this. And they'll only want the top note to be a harmonic like. And that is not clearly indicated at all. So. <laughs> Basically, harmonics already suck. <laughs> Notating harmonics is already a mess at this stage and we haven't even scratched the surface, all right? Now, let's go even further than this. There are two basic systems when it comes to notating what pitch we're supposed to be hearing. You can either notate the pitch that will sound when you produce the harmonic. So basically this really high note, right? Or you can notate where on the fretboard you need to stop the string to produce that harmonic. And these are not the same note. That is really important to keep in mind. So this I've shown you in the fifth fret, the harmonic of the fifth fret is always two octaves above the regular note that we've played. So I'm gonna write this down for you. If the regular open string note is an E, then this harmonic in the fifth fret is going to be this E here, right? So if I want to write the pitch at which the note will sound, then I will see this. I will have that note written in my music. If, however, the composer decided that uh, they wanted to show us not what pitch to play, but where to play it, then I will have something like this. Because the note here is an A. And then they will tell me to play this as a harmonic, either with a text or with a diamond note head, like this, whether filled in or not they will tell me that that's supposed to be a harmonic on this string. But look at how different these two systems are. This looks nothing like that. And yet they mean the exact same thing. And there is no indication often which one of these systems is meant. So you have to use your judgment and try to sort of guess which one the composer wanted to say. This is a situation that you will rarely encounter, it will usually be a little bit more obvious from the context which one of these, uh, of these notation systems is being used. But there is no standardized way to write this down. Composers sometimes make this easy for us by writing a certain thing, but uh, oftentimes they just don't. They just write either the pitch or where we're supposed to stop the note and uh, they let us figure out the rest. And in some situations, this is something that I was talking about with Ashley, actually, she's never seen this, but I've seen this a lot, especially when I was a child. I haven't seen it as much recently. Maybe it's a, a type of, uh, of music that is more likely to do this. Maybe didactic music is more likely to do this. But um, sometimes you even see both. I have seen things like this. Uh, this is rare, I do admit, but I have se seen things like this. Where, you have the harmonic on the bottom telling you where to play the note, and then you have this pitch, the resulting pitch on the top telling you what the note will actually sound like. This can be helpful or it can be very confusing. <laughs> and sometimes the notes are independent, other times they are connected by a stem, like this, a really long stem. So when you see this in a score, you know what this means. This means basically play the bottom note as a harmonic to create the pitch of the top note, which is here. All right? That's what that notation means if you ever encounter it. Um, if this was not complicated enough, <laughs> this is not even the end of it. There are other systems as well. For this same harmonic that we were looking at, which is here on the fifth fret of the sixth string, Sometimes the composers or the editors will tell us where to play it by indicating the fret number 
with numbers. So sometimes you will have this note, the open string, with a harmonic sign, either in letters or in words or through the note head, and then with a fret number on it. Harmonic in the fifth fret. So this tells you, play this open string, the E, but as a harmonic on the fifth fret. And then you know what to do. But unfortunately, sometimes they write these with Roman numerals, sometimes they write these with regular numerals, sometimes they write it with a simple H, sometimes they write it as har, harm, or in a million other abbreviations that you could possibly imagine. So uh, these are all different methods of writing the exact same harmonics. I don't know if you, if you realize how insane this is. <laughs> it's already, it's already, you know, crazy. We're, we're really not in the, in the, in through, through the meat of it yet. So these are all different ways of writing the same harmonic. And this is more true for natural harmonics than for artificial harmonics. It is generally more common to see these complicated systems of notating uh, natural harmonics rather than artificial harmonics. Just because natural ones are the ones where your um, notes can be very different from the pitches that they would normally produce, like I was showing you here, A versus this really high E, right? Very different note, but you play it in the same fret. We've seen that harmonics can sometimes be indicated with diamond-shaped note heads or with the words harmonic written on top of it or somewhere around it. There's one last thing that, uh, th that can be used to indicate harmonics, and that is the circle, the famous circle. So uh, if you have a note, which is otherwise not possible to play as an open string, you might encounter a really small circle around it, which can be on top, it can be on the side, it can be even below, I've seen it below as well, like this, or it can be on the other side of the note. So again, no standardized thing here. If you see this little circle, what this means is play this as a harmonic. And usually, usually, again, take this with a grain of salt, this is an uh, at pitch harmonic. So when you see this, this is usually notated at pitch. Okay? Um, so basically what this tells you is do whatever you need to do I don't know whether it's artificial, natural, or whatever other kind of harmonic. Do whatever you need to do to make this note come out as a harmonic. So for example, you could play it as an artificial harmonic uh, here. And you've created that pitch. Right? Uh, usually it is that pitch. Sometimes, however, some composers take this to mean one octave higher. And there's no way for you to know that, unless they tell you. So uh, if they write it on the score, great, you've won the lottery, you know. If they don't, then you just better hope you, you guessed correctly. And that's it. So sometimes, most of the times this means at pitch, sometimes it means one octave higher. Uh, and there's no indication oftentimes about this. If this wasn't difficult enough, in some cases, composers where they write you the, um, the fret in which you're supposed to play something, they can also write the finger down to show you what left hand finger you should play this as. So for example, you have a three there. This means use your third finger to play this harmonic. Right? If there was a two there instead, you would use your second finger. You would supposed to be using your second finger. What's the problem here? The problem is that <laughs> This, this fret number is sometimes also uh, a regular Arabic numeral. So how are you supposed to know which one is meant? Well, when it's a seven, it's pretty clear because you don't have seven fingers. But uh, when you have a four, for example, that could mean your fourth finger or it could mean the fourth harmonic. Am I doing what the composer wanted or not? Doesn't really, uh, there's not, not really a way for you to know. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> this is just, uh, again, one more cause for frustration when it comes to harmonics. All right, let's look at a couple of uh, other things um, before we go into the examples. As you might have noticed, some of these pitches are really, really high up. So, when you have things like this, you know, uh, 
This is extremely high <laughs> if you were to write it correctly. Let me try to let me try to do this. This is A C E G B D. So this is now <laughs> the first one. The least high of these. This is an this is an E, right? So for the next note I would have to be writing uh, this G sharp <laughs> and for the next one <laughs> this is B so G sharp and B so <laughs> obviously this is impractical when you write notes actually at pitch you don't want to write them with all these ledger lines because nobody has time to count them right this is incredibly frustrating to do so normally what you would do is you would take them to an acceptable octave, for example, one octave below, and then this is a little bit more normal. People would recognize this as an E pretty immediately. Uh, G is a little harder to recognize, but you will still be able to recognize it uh, if you've worked with this. And then the next one, okay, that one is really high. Uh, oh, sorry, this was actually, I did, I did this wrong. The last one is supposed to be also ab above the ledger line. So... All right, that's a B. So this is, <laughs> um, okay, uh, G, B, okay, there we go, that's the B, All right? So this is more easy to read, even this is really high, but sometimes you would just encounter this with an octave sign on top. The 8VA basically tells you to play everything exactly one octave above what uh, is written. So when you see this, when you see notes that are this high, you basically know immediately that these are supposed to be um, harmonics, even if they are not indicated as harmonics because there's no other place for you to play this on the guitar. This is already almost the, almost the highest note of the guitar, so obviously you can't play one octave higher than that because you would have to go, right? Um, so when you see this, you can immediately understand that these are harmonics, but even this, even one octave above is sometimes Confusing to read still, as you can see, there's still a lot of ledger lines here. So uh, sometimes you will even see the other marking, the more rare marking, which is you will see the notes two octaves below and you will see 15 VA, which is basically, um, or 15 MA actually is often, sorry, what's written there. Um, so this tells you that the notes below are supposed to be played two octaves above. So if the regular notes sound like this, one octave above sounds like this, and one octave above that sounds like this. Uh. And these are the harmonics that you're supposed to play. So in this case, when you see notation like this, it basically means, hey, these are the pitches that are supposed to come out. Either they are written like this, which gets confusing really quickly, or they're written like this with an octave marking that tells you to that tells you to play everything one octave higher, or they're written like this with a two octave marking that tells you to play everything two octaves higher. Uh, and when you encounter this, you know the pitches that are supposed to come out, and it is up to you to find where to play them on the guitar. This is a notation style that feels difficult in the beginning because they don't tell you where to play, but I actually kind of prefer it at this stage because I am, um, because I, uh, am uh, you know, very confident in my ability to find harmonics around the fretboard and I'd rather just know what's supposed to come out and figure out by myself where I'm supposed to play them. If they had told me the fret numbers instead, I would first have to figure out what notes they produce and then take the steps of thinking, hmm, is there a place to play that that is easier maybe? And in this case, there probably isn't, but uh, it still gives me that freedom to look without that additional extra step. So this are, these are the basic ways of notating harmonics. Now, what's happening with artificial harmonics? How can we differentiate between natural and artificial harmonics? Well, usually when we see notes that are not easily playable as natural harmonics, and it's up to us to uh, distinguish between them, these are implicitly going to be artificial harmonics. So if I have something like this, dum, dum, let's say, uh, and I have a marking that says harmonicas or, you know, arm or harm, or I'm not going to go through all of them anymore. And I know that all of these are harmonics. Then I am going to have to find these, these pitches somewhere on the guitar. And if I don't see an octave sign, then my final sounding pitches are supposed to be these. 
said this is our, these are supposed to be harmonics. And so what I can do is I can go one octave below and play artificial harmonics. That was, sorry. <laughs> I'm uh, just messing up right now, sorry. I'm playing artificial harmonics that result in these pitches. More often though than not, when you have artificial harmonics, you will see an octave marking in front, or you will even see something like uh, arm OTT or uh, harm uh, OCT, which stands for ottavado or octavado, either in Italian or in Spanish. And this basically means that you're supposed to play these notes one octave above the pitch that is currently written. So when you have this kind of situation, and this is related to your question, Gökçe, about, uh, um, about uh, El Testament de Media. When you see this marking, this tells you that these harmonics are supposed to be played one octave above their regular sounding pitch. What's the regular sounding pitch? One that I just played. Sorry, the last note was wrong. It was supposed to be a D here, right? And I'm supposed to play them one octave above, so I can still play the same notes here with my left hand. But instead of just playing the notes with my right hand, I'm going to move my first finger around, move my index finger to be exactly one octave above every note, and pluck, just like I taught you at the beginning of this live stream how to play artificial harmonics. So when you see something like this, you can literally just use the same left hand fingerings that you use for regular notes. You're just gonna have to make sure that your index finger, your eye, is exactly above the harmonic at all times when you play a note. And then you use any one of the available other fingers, as mentioned before, to actually play this note. I'll show this on the other camera just so you can see it. Um, there we go, it's here, and I'll give it some more light so we can see it really well. Uh, all right, so here is my fretboard. I'm going to be uh, positioning myself in a place where you can see it. Here is uh, this passage. My index finger is blocking each, each individual note by just uh, holding it a little bit, not pressing it down, just touching the string. And my middle finger, in this case, is blocking it. Right? And you can play anything like this. It is a slow technique because your right hand has to move around. If you forget to move, by the way, uh, it won't sound. So here's the first note. Now with my left hand, I've placed the next note, but I forgot to move here in my right hand. And then the next note is just not gonna sound. Right? It just does not sound good. So uh, actually on the main camera, the same thing is, here's the first note. If I forget to move, that won't sound. So I need to move both the left hand to the next note, and the right hand to play artificial harmonics. Thank you so much everybody for being here with me today. We have really cool live streams coming up. Julia Ballare is coming up in two days with a technique live stream on uh, warming up and preparing your left and right hand. And then we have Irina Kulikova next week. Lots of really, really cool guests coming up soon. So I hope to see you all around and uh, I am wishing you all a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Thank you so much, Kevin and everybody else. And see you next time. See you on Tony's Live. Unlike in regular notes where I am pressing down the note and as soon as I take the finger off, the note ceases to sound.